Good morning, everyone. Greetings, peace and love. My name is Kimberly Wright. Welcome to the acronym M Soon, making something out of nothing. Uh, this class is all about recycling and upcycling beautiful crafts. Uh, today, we're going to continue with our CD crafts. The, uh, you know, remember CDs, those things we used to listen to, technology just keep on changing and passing right on by. So uh, last week we, we were creating, a, you had the option to choose whatever design you wanted to choose out of your cardboard for your cardboard design. However, I chose a heart and a moon and uh, we're gonna get to that in a couple of minutes. First, I wanna go through our uh, holidays for today. It is August the 24th, 2021, Tuesday. Today is Kobe Bryant Day, National Waffle Day, and Pluto Demoted Day. All right. So I just want to get right into our lesson. And I hope you um, had a chance to possibly put up some CDs and uh, get your shape together, what you desire to make. I decided to make this uh, moon and we were making, uh, well, you can start out with one, but I was starting out with two wind chimes. So I'm making one with the moon and the bottom is gonna have stars and part us, uh, just stars and uh, this is the heart particular piece. You can see the size of it as, it as it pertains to the size of my hand. So I have two of those. It's gonna be like a back and a front and I have two of the moons. So I just recently spray painted the rest of the, uh, the chimes that hang down. I'm gonna just grab those I don't know if they are dry enough yet. However, I am going to transfer them over to this particular paper. Taking my time. I have about five smaller stars for my wind chimes. Just transferring them and uh, I chose to use one color for my backing as far as, uh, remember I said you can use whatever color you like. I chose to use black. I just like how the, the uh, CDs play off of the black. I'm getting spray paint all over my hand. And then these are the chimes for the heart piece. I have several smaller hearts. Um, not several, I have about five. So those are still just a little bit wet because I just spray painted them not too long ago. So what I'm going to do right now is wash my hands quickly.
All right, as you can see, I have my uh, hot glue gun here. And I have uh, a piece of board to protect the glue from dripping on the counter or whatever surface I'm working on. And I also have uh, regular Elmer's glue. Now, if there's out anybody out there with any questions um, or if you need to get the list of supplies for this project, please let me know. But so far, what you're gonna need is cardboard, CDs, old CDs. You're gonna need some kind of string or yarn. And today I have this jute twine, although I probably won't meet, need it today. And I have this silver bead wire. Also, I want to use the clear, uh, I particularly want to use the clear fishing wire because it gives the illusion that uh, whatever is hanging is, is kind of like floating because you can barely see the uh, clear fishing, fishing wire. And so what I'm going to do since we are waiting for those pieces to dry is just, uh, it takes time to cut some uh, CDs. And then once you are actually start cutting as well, you'll see sometimes that the, the, the backing or the paper uh, splits and flakes and it'll, um, actually the CD ruins and it all comes off. Every CD is different. so. Um, you have to kind of like experiment and probably go through a few CDs, but I'm just going to quickly go, go ahead and cut this particular piece down. I kind of cut my pieces down all to about the same uh, sort of kind of same size, like a small, medium type of size. And then once I cut one CD, I kind of group them together so that the backing or the colors can stay the same. And so as you can see, I have already pre-cut some pieces here. This is like one set, as you can see, the uh, iridescent rainbow color on them. And then this is like a clear set right here. And then right here, this is even more uh, colorful, deep blue. All right, so it's really hard to find that deep blue uh, one with the all the colors on them. That's what I'm like searching for more. But however, I do have uh, enough for one side of my moon. And since I've started already placing uh, the CD pieces together on one of the moons, what I'm going to do is just start gluing them on this piece. And so, as far as placing them. Uh, give me one second. I want to uh, bring this camera out some more so you can get more of a top view. Sorry. All right. Yeah. All right. So just making sure I have a clean surface. Um, instead of just putting my CDs the CD pieces down anywhere, I actually uh, kind of uh, find the endings, uh, try to place them together like a puzzle. So since I've already done that with this piece, I'm going to transfer these pieces over here and just kind of start to glue the ones that I've already found. And that piece is so small, you don't need like a, a lot, a lot of glue, just a little. And if you want to use your hot glue as well, you're more than welcome to do that. All right. Which do you prefer, the hot glue or the Elmer's glue? Or just uh, the well, I'm using both of them in the, on the project, but I, I prefer to use the Elmer's glue on the 
eating pieces. And when I put my, like when I put my uh, two pieces together like this, I'm going to probably use some Elmer's glue and hot glue. I just want to reinforce it. But for the CD pieces, I choose to use uh, Elmer's glue. And the reason why too is because since these pieces are so small and I'm working with my hands, I don't want to uh, burn myself. Anybody out there creating something? Miss Kim? Yes, ma'am. I can't, I'm, I'm not, I didn't do well trying to make the wind chimes. I think I cut my piece too narrow. So can I just make it an art piece? I mean, you're more than welcome to make whatever you want to make. Uh, uh, I mean, why do you think you have yours too narrow? Everybody, well, just, it can just be different. Yeah. It, Nobody's it work has to be the same. Yeah, it just looks And then maybe you might cut some more pieces and have narrow pieces in between a thicker pieces or something. Ah. Uh, I mean, it's up to you. Yeah, I really, I was, I, okay. I really can't say because I don't actually, can I, what, you want to show me the pieces? Yeah, I can see. I'll okay, give it one second. One second. One second, love. Put it close in the jean. I like that. What is that? Is that yeah, I put, I put some beads on it. I mean, if you're just deciding to do something totally different, that's fine. Okay. No problem. This is just, yeah. if anybody wants to do the CD art, you know. Okay. That, that looks very beautiful too. It's no problem. Thank you. Okay, you all can incorporate other things with your CD art. It's no okay. Problem. Thank you. All right. So, you know, it takes a little time to actually do the work. And even right now, um, you know, we all supposed to be like in a classroom setting. So really you all supposed to be working. And that's why I'm just going on ahead and showing you how I'm applying these pieces. And so as you can see, I've taken the round CD pieces and just kind of spaced them out along the curved part of the moon. And that looks pretty evened out. And I can even fit smaller pieces in there later. However, I'm just going to go ahead and take my time and glue those down. So all I need is a little glue. And as you can see, I like to place them first so that I can make sure that everything is going to come out neat and just the way I want it. And so I just feel as though I only have like really one chance to, uh, if once I glue something down, I only have one chance to put it down. So I should go ahead and, you know, space it out, make sure it is where I, where I desire it to be. Did anybody, uh, well, I know it's a couple of people last week that said they came up with what they were going to create. However, they didn't want to just say it in the class because they didn't want nobody to copy off them. But you don't have to say what you're making, but did anybody figure out what they were going to make? Ms. Jean, what is your piece? Is it just an abstract piece or is it a mask? It's going to be abstract. Okay. 
But it ended up looking kind of like a shield or something, you know, yeah. African shield. I'm, I'm still working on what it is. It's kind of making me. <laughs> Every time I think of something else, it changes its mind. So I don't know. It's no problem. And don't forget, you know, you was in Damn, my... Damn, I did so. Go ahead, Miss Betty. I uh, cut the moon and then I did a... Uh, the uh, supposed to be butterfly. Okay. You want What you want to show it to us? Uh, no, I was just just saying that that's what I'm working on. So you say you're doing the moon. So you say you're doing the moon and a butterfly. Uh huh. Oh, that's nice. And I'm cutting my CD pieces. Yes, ma'am. And I thought for the the moon, I was going to use these. Uh, Drink tops, maybe. Drink tops. You talking about like those plastic bottle tops? Uh uh. The flip tops from the drink cans. Oh, okay. Talking about? Are you talking about like the metal, the little metal can? Mm -hmm. I mean. Ain't nothing wrong with trying it out. You say you're going to put that with the CD pieces. Is that I it? think so. I might just put it on the moon and then put the CD pieces in, be in between there. Okay. I mean, it's, it's only th the only thing you can do is, uh, you know, try it out. Yeah, and Why if it doesn't look right, I'll take it off. So as you can see, young people, I am not only going in, to, in between these pieces here, I am looking for pieces that actually kind of fit, so to speak. So like this corner here, that fits kind of good with that edge, like if I were to put it together. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and glue that piece down. I already put it down to see how it would look before I'm actually gluing it. That looks pretty good. So right now, like you see this edge here, I'm looking for an edge that would complement that side or would measure along with that side, so to speak. Mm -hmm. All right. So I don't want to go too far spaced out. I need to stick to uh, actually putting pieces right up here. Close. Okay, Kim, Melanie says she wants to show you something. Okay, I heard her whispering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this. What is it? Can you tell us? Um, so I have this heart here. Uh huh. And a flag down here. And I tried to do an equation here. Okay. An equation? Yes. Y'all heard that young girl use that big word. Equation. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and and so I like yeah. your nails too. Oh, Thank you. This is so what cute. I'm working on. Okay. That looks so cute. I love that butterfly. And you look so cute too. Did uh -huh. you leave did you leave your tooth for the uh tooth fairy? I did. Did you get something? Yes. Okay, okay, that's good. You look so beautiful. 
You feeling Thank okay? You. Yes, I'm all right. Okay, good job. Thank you for sharing with us, Melody. Keep up the good work, Melody. Thanks for joining my class. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have any questions about the project or anything to share? Please let me know you, if you have any questions as it pertains to not uh, wanting to uh, stay in the same spot. Like if you need to go on or you need to know the next step, feel free to ask. Anybody got any ideas of what they plan on making as it pertains to the design of the cardboard? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody even making this piece? I have several ideas. Um, okay. I know you're probably just keeping yours to yourself. I was just wondering, <laughs> did y'all even have any ideas? I have a piece of, uh, what is that stuff they put in the walls? Um, um, okay. Asbestos? Sheet rock. Sheet asbestos. rock. I have a, a large piece of sheet rock. I'm uh -huh. going to paint it, but I'm going to apply my design to it. And, okay. uh, well, a flower is one um idea and i'm gonna make the mirror i mean put the cd in the middle okay. and the other one is a huge eye that sounds nice and don't you all know you can uh incorporate things like to make a mirror with these pieces or i mean it is already kind of mirrored off anyway however if you want to create something looking more mirrored so that's why I'm moving these pieces around to make sure that I'm kind of like lining up the edges to get a really good fitted mosaic uh, style piece. So is that Elmer's glue that you're using? Yes, ma'am. I mean, you know, you're more than welcome to use hot glue, but Elmer's glue is going to cover more. You have so many pieces to put down. I don't want to use all my hot glue. And then um, not only that to try to, put that hot glue on these small pieces, you run the risk of burning yourself. So I, I, I'm, I am gonna use hot glue, but not at this stage. Okay. And hot glue dries too fast for me. <laughs> I'm slow. Well, I know that sometimes when hot glue gets cooled down, it chips or, you know, the, the stuff just comes right up. So uh, I just figure why not, uh, use Elmer's glue to get the coverage right. And then, you know, you can use, I can use hot glue to actually put these two pieces together. All right, so I'm coming on right here to the side. As you can see, as I continue to build, I'm looking to once again, match up along the edges to see what fits. I think I kind of like that cut Amber. right there. And these pieces actually, once you completely finish, they might not seem like they really look like nothing now, but once they're completely finished, they really look professional and nice as something you could have even bought out of the store. It's looking nice now. Thank you. And uh, I just want you all to know that you can really be creative and go wherever you like. If you want to make something for a baby's room, you know, you can do all sorts of images like ice cream, cone, lips. Uh, you can make anything pretty much that you desire. You know, just keep it more like a simple image. All right. So far, as you can see, I'm continuing on going. And also I'm going to, that's why I said it's gonna take a little time to uh, 
actually mosaic your uh, can't have the top to mosaic your CD pieces on the cardboard, and I'm going to mosaic my smaller pieces as well. The actual heart and the stars. All right. So, so far, that's what that's looking like. And I've already pre-cut some more pieces. As the pieces sit, they really, really air, air and light. If they move around, all you have to do is just um, slide them back where they need to go. You have to look at it every so often to make sure they are in place. Because if you use too much glue, they will kind of slide around. So a piece of that paper just flaked off, which made the CD look different. However, I'm still gonna use this piece. I need to use that on a rounded edge. Mm -hmm. All right, so as you see the curve of the CD, uh, let me show you what I'm speaking of the actual circular part of the CD here. You can utilize these edges uh, to your best ability by adding them to the edges of your curved pieces, whatever you decide that you're making. So think about that as well, as far as when you lay them down for the mosaic. All right, so once again, my curved pieces, since I'm going to kind of put them around the curved uh, edges, I pretty much finished with the pieces of the moon. I didn't even mean to do that. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and start doing this second moon instead of that heart because the heart is not even with these same pieces. I just kind of made a little boo-boo, but it's okay. All you have to do is fix it. <laughs> Look at this uh, ethereal. So also, once you, you might find that your pieces get a little uh, dirty or dusty. Once the, you completely finish uh, crafting or putting your piece together, you can gently wipe the CDs down and clean everything back off again. Hmm. All right, so what I'm doing, I'm taking those curved pieces out to add them to the, uh, the back side or the other side of the moon, the opposite okay. side. There is no back side because the wind chime will uh, spin and turn. And each side is whatever side you see is the front side. I'm just taking my curved pieces out so that I can go ahead and put them around the edge of the other side and separating my, just my square edge pieces so that I can continue to add them within the moon. And don't forget some of these pieces that we're making, uh, I want you all to definitely take photos of these pieces to build up for our next uh, show that we'll have in the future. And also you may decide to give these pieces away for like uh, gifts or something like that. And I would like for you to take pictures of the, your work before you give your artwork away, if that's the case. All right, so I've separated all my pieces. And these are the ends that have the curve or the rounded edge. And I know that I'm going to use those on the other edge 
other side of the moon. So I'm just going on ahead and applying those. Also, I wanted to, uh, I don't know if you all have worked on your abstract painting pieces, but I was gonna show you the pieces that I did last class and really where I could actually touch up on some of the whites. So I'll be showing you that in a couple of minutes. All right, almost done with this. And it's just like a time consuming thing. It just takes time that you have to pretty much keep working on it. So all of those are glued down. I think I got one more little piece of the curve or rounded edge, which I need two more to go around the edge. And I'm making sure just to look back at all of them, space them out as needed. Make sure they're around the edge the same properly. All right. And these last pieces here, I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate them within this piece somewhere. However, I have to find where they fit the best. I think that's gonna look good. Oops, right there. Yep, so that looks really good. I put it down, now it's like about time to put down two pieces just to see if it's gonna fit like a puzzle. Inserting that piece there. And I already had that piece shaped out here. And as I'm going, I can just look and see where a particular piece will fit. Yikes. Now, if you see a little bit of glue coming from beneath the pieces, it's okay. That glue should dry clear. So don't try to clean it up or anything. Just leave it as is. Okay, that looks good right there. Those spaces uh, between the CD pieces, that's normally where the grout will go. I think it's called grout. Yes, ma'am. That is normally where the grout would go if you were working on wood or something a little mm, bit more sturdy. Yeah. But that's why I wanted the black in my background because it really contrasts really well with the uh, CD to make it really look like mirror. And uh, you don't have to put grout or anything on this particular cardboard piece. However, that's why I said to you all, as far as your background color, you can use multiple colors. You can be creative and uh, use a different color to see how it might pop. It's all up to you. I just want you all to be creative. I was just remembering some work we did in, uh, in what's his name's class? Um, Jamal. 
Kermit. Kermit. Okay, talking about with the CD. No, with the uh, mosaic. Oh, okay, yeah. And how we had to did. put the grout in there. I, just, I was just remembering stuff like that. Yeah, he actually did do a, a class like that. Was that tedious or you had fun doing it? It was fun. Okay. Making designs. I like making designs. Hey. Out of the out of the uh mosaic pieces. Uh-huh. Uh, any of my artwork. Uh-huh. Okay, hold on. Yeah, one second. Sorry. Are we still live? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It has to be over in about 15 minutes or so. So as I'm gluing these pieces, I can see some of the, the actual uh, paper is kind of releasing up. So I'm wondering if my actual CD pieces are gonna come up at some point in time. I mean, and like if the CD is gonna lift off the paper and is it actually like the paper, is it that the only thing I'm, that I'm gluing down? I don't know. All right, so of course I'm gonna to have to get more CDs, but so far, this looks like a good start. And I only have one more piece to place. I actually should have fit it down before I, yeah. All right, I think I got one more little piece. And I see where I can actually put that. We said, uh, ah. All right, so, so far, sorry. So far, this is what I have for those pieces. It's gonna continue to work that until I get them all placed on there. And I wanted to show you all last class, we did these two mountain pieces right here. One was in the daytime, kind of like at nighttime. What I wanted to do today is basically just touch up my snow, my snow area and add a little bit more white to uh, make it more stark or heavy. And all of, that's all I'm gonna basically do, do is touch up my white. All right, so I have my paint here. I'm just gonna come over here. Smooth. Make that white a little bit more pronounced. Uh -uh. Just on my top areas. Miss Kim. Yes, ma'am. I just had some of my stuff that I was working on lying around. And uh, my son-in-law said, oh, Grandmommy, I want that. Would you give me that? I thought, what? So sometimes we think it's not pretty, but other people think it's pretty. I said, yes, you may have it. So I, I, I'm getting ready to 
give it to him. So sometimes we don't think it looks good, but other people see beauty in it. I'm just adding that you guys, not, not, that, not that my stuff is beautiful, but sometimes when you have something, you don't think it's that pretty and other people see a lot of beauty in it. But you know what I find, Miss Jean, is what? that like sometimes we are our worst critics sometimes. Yes. We, we can be so hard on ourselves and I see sometimes that people will put themselves down and say, like their piece don't look that good, but they'll right. compliment somebody else. Say, "Oh, I love your art." What the same yeah. person you tell them that you love, they art, they might be putting themselves down too. You know, I it's know. just that you have to really uh, give yourself credit, basically. Yeah, you give yourself credit, and I mean, you know, look at what you've done and you tried, and basically that's just one piece, and you just continue to work. Every time you do artwork, it'll get better and better. Some of the stuff that you think doesn't really look good, somebody else might love that. And the pieces that you think look all great, somebody might not even really like it. Well, you know, that comes from our upbringing. You know, you think you cute. Your head looks like a shoot to shoot. You remember? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I never, I never thought I was cute. So my mother told me when people say, you think you cute. They think you're cute. I said, oh, yeah, yeah they think you're cute. But anyway, I guess like our art, you know, you think that's good. That ain't nothing. But you're right. We do put ourselves down because we don't want to be, you know, don't try to think so much of yourself. Oh, okay. But anyway. All right. Just adding that you guys know a lot of people see beauty in it. Oh, I think it's too just not having the confidence or just, you know, you know, we can, it's so much stuff going in the world. I teach this in yoga, so much stuff going in the world that, you know, why, if you, if you want to have the best life from this time on, why don't you concentrate on the best things? If you want to have, uh, you know, to bring positivity and all the mm. things that you love towards you, you concentrate on the things that you love. You, a lot of times we concentrate on things that we don't love. Right. Oh, I, yeah, you complaining and thinking about things that, you know, so concentrate on the things that you love that make you happy and those things will get better and better rather than, you know, putting yourself down. You got enough. Know. You got mm -hmm. enough out there to put you put you down. In the right. Room. Yeah. And you can't be depressed when you're creating. I noticed that. That's right. I mean, still you could, I guess, depending on where your mind is. But well, it's, it's hard though because your your mind just takes over the creativity. So just keep. I it find tight. that if you ever get started, if you're feeling depressed right. and you ever get started on your right. artwork, it actually helps. Yes, it does. So as you can see on this one, I wanted to make the moon a little more brighter, and so I just added another coat of white. I'm gonna make my mountain caps a little bit stronger by adding white. And I'm gonna go back into my snow. Starting out here, snow and water. This is snow and water. You all seen water, and some of the ocean or river or lake is frozen as well. Well, that's what this is, right in front of a mountain scene. And so I just kind of want to go straight across, but make my line a little bit wiggly as if the water is flowing. Want to just cap off my snow right here, a little bit more stark and darker. And right here is the water falls off. Okay. 
Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with that. These are gonna be some really nice paintings once they are framed. It's nothing wrong with saying that your artwork looks beautiful, you had fun doing it, uplift yourself, pat yourself on the back. All right. So those two pieces are done. I think what I need to do is just add a little bit more yellow for that. Uh, sun to bring that out a bit. As I was just staring at it, that's what I thought it might need. So I'm just getting a little yellow, mixing a little white with it to brighten it up. And I'm going to repaint this sun, just to wake up the sun a little bit. And it's okay, it's like a light, bright, a light, bright sun because it's in the winter time as well. It's not like it's just gonna be blazing like uh, in the summer. All right. So once I am finished with uh, putting mosaic CD pieces on these hearts and stars, then what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to leave an area where I can put a hole, the hole with a hole, don't forget to leave an area where you can put a hole to uh, be able to hang the pieces. And before you actually, if you wanted to go on with your steps, before you actually glue these two pieces together, like so, you would have your pieces already mosaic with the hole in it. And you put the, you hot glue the strings in between there, place them where you would like them hot glue the strings in there before you actually place it on there. And I'm going to actually put, use uh, hot glue and El Elmer's glue to reinforce this when I actually put these together and sit something on top of it to mount it or to hold it down until it dries. So uh, if somebody is finished with their wind chimes next week, I'll be glad to see you However, I plan on being finished with at least one of my wind chimes. Does anybody have any suggestions, questions out there? Yeah. For those uh, smaller stars, or yeah. hearts, and they need, that's what's going to be hanging. And that's what's gonna hang down. Those are gonna be in winter. time. That's what's hanging down from the, the the stars. The stars are gonna hang from my moon when shine, and the hearts are gonna hang from my heart when shine. Anybody else? Well, yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm trying when I paste the back. The back to my other piece, I'm going to try to make both sides equally interesting. So it'll have like two pieces of art. Yeah, now that'll be, that'll be unique and different. I'm working. <laughs> yeah. So just because you're using some different materials, it's no problem. That, that might be just what you are drawn to for this particular project. But however, um, I hope that you still are inspired to use some CDs or some type of art and um, just to share it with us again. And anybody else have any comments, questions? Yeah. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for joining Making Something Out of Nothing. My name is Kimberly Wright. I want you all to stay safe, love yourselves, and have a wonderful and blessed day, and I'll see you all next week. Beautiful picture. When they start lunch, Kimberly. Now, when will they start serving lunch? I think from 11.30 to 1.30. <laughs> oh, it, they, they are, okay, they started already. I mean, I didn't know they had Zoom lunch. Okay. Zoom lunch? Yes, at the center. I know you went back to work yesterday, right? I don't understand what you mean by Zoom lunch. Resumed. They had to open up Resumed. the cafeteria at Darnell Center. <laughs> <laughs>